Hi everybody. Um, today's project that we are going to do is a simple card in watercolor. And I know a lot of you haven't really tried watercolor, which is the reason that I kind of want to teach it, is to show you how to do something new. And I've kept it really as simple as I could. I think you'll like it once you get the hang of it. This is the finished card. I kind of practiced and I painted a couple times before, just so you know. My first one came out a little bit like Dracula. It's close to Halloween when I'm filming this, so he looks funny. And then I adjusted and I did a second one, and this one's all inked in with um, some black marker. And then the third one is just the paint. And I think I like this one the best, but you could do it whatever way you please. And to paint this project, I used my set of Mission Gold watercolor paints. Um, I got this set on Amazon at a really good price. It came with the palette, and it comes with these little seven milliliter tubes which are that big and believe it or not that is a lot of paint you will see when we paint this how far the paint goes um, there are lots of brands out there that are excellent this is an artist grade paint and most of the colors are light fast which is important when you're doing good work if you want to practice on a cheap set, um, I'm going to be doing a video with this little set that I got at the dollar store later on. And I'll show you that you can get nice results with that, but it's not going to be archival. But the nice thing I like about the Mission watercolors are the colors are just beautiful. They're so highly pigmented, you need just a little crumb of them. Like, I keep this palette set up. This is all 36 colors, and I mark them here. And it's like getting to know um, a new language when you go into a new line of paint, because you can't think in that terms. When you think of a color you, in your head you want, you have to really look and see. And um, on the box, they have a really nice color chart and it kind of gives you swatches but I mean it's more fun to play with your own and we're going to do some mixing too and now I'm going to keep this simple I'm putting this away and I'm just going to use my ceramic palette here with the colors and this will be in the pattern I swatched out I'm only using seven colors and actually if you take out black and the three colors that I used for the balls and the lettering we're really only going to be using um, three colors for the reindeer. And now look at all the variances we're going to achieve with three colors. So that's the exciting part about watercolors is um, it's really easy to get color variances. And it's not as scary as people think. So we're going to get ready and go and um do our project so i started by tracing them out lightly i printed my pattern on vellum which is translucent so you can kind of see your placement and i used my um kneaded eraser to kind of pull back the lines a little bit i'm hoping you could see them i'm kind of don't have great light here today um, it's not real sunny out but it's enough for me to see them so that's what's gonna matter and the same with you you don't want your lines real dark okay so I'll be back in a second and we'll get started okay um, I did turn on the light so I hope we're not gonna get a lot of shadows I guess the first thing I should start a talk about is brushes and it's odd but I use very few round brushes in my acrylic painting but that's really kind of all I use when I do watercolor I sometimes will use a um, angle shader 
but not often. The more I'm using watercolor, the more I'm finding that the round brushes are fine. And now this is a size four, and this little one is a two. Though they're a little bit fuller than what I'm used to. These are by Dynasty. They were, I don't even remember the line they are. They have the clear handles. They had sent me them, and they weren't really great for my acrylic painting. I wasn't happy. And this is a 3-0 brush, but I don't hardly ever use that, maybe just for the eye or the details. You can use your acrylic brushes, too. But just so you get the idea of the size. I think the important thing is when they're wet, that they come to a little bit of a point. And you'll see, water coloring is far looser than acrylic paint but um, you still want a little bit of control. And I mean, that's the fun part is we're gonna learn to control this nicely. So we're gonna start with our reindeer. And here's our um, the raw colors that are not mixed at all. And I'd like them kind of a, a medium brown, not too dark. Um, one thing I wanted to mention too is when you do watercolors, it's as if you're looking through tinted glass. You have to think in those terms. So you're gonna be putting layer upon layer upon layer, and it's as if you're adding another layer of the same color. The color will intensify. If you add a yellow over a blue, you'll get green. You have to look at it as um, if you're looking through tinted glass glass. I think that kind of helped me get a grasp on it a little bit. And the nice thing about it that you'll see is once it's dried in that, if you have lines that you don't like, you can move them because the difference between watercolor and acrylic is that watercolor will reconstitute. Every time it's wet, it will um, turn back into liquid. It, which is, a, it's a plus and it's a minus in some ways. If you try to paint with it like you paint with your acrylics, where you're gonna put a layer on top and expect the bottom layer to stay down, it's not gonna happen. You can't put a lighter layer over a darker layer and um, expect that you won't get mud. So I guess we'll just show you with our project and hopefully you'll find you like it a little bit. Now, another way um, that I want to, the way that I like to control watercolor is by wetting the paper first. The paint tends to remain mostly where you wet. It will not go past unless you really have a lot of it. So one way to control it is to lay down a foundation of where you want the paint to be which is kind of nice because you don't have to be fussy. You don't have to go right up to your edges. It'll kind of confine it a little bit. And now I'm going to start, as I said, with a very light wash of burnt sienna, which is this one. And as you can see, I'm just tipping the brush in the paint and pulling it on to the palette and it looks like almost nothing. Um, I have a suggestion for you too, is you might wanna have a piece of paper next to you so you can try your colors. You can see how strong of a color you're gonna get. Now the, the paint will always look darker when it's wet. It'll dry lighter. So for the first washing, I think that looks pretty good. And what I'm gonna do is Start at the edge because it's going to be darker. So I want the tip of my brush, which has more paint in it, to go along that edge and kind of fill it in. And as I said, you don't have to be fussy. You don't have to hurry. You could take your time. You know, people have a sense of hurrying with watercolor, like they have to do something before it dries. But even if it dries and say you get a line, you can just come back and you can see it melts right back in. 
So I guess this is the base coat. And what I decided to do on my deer is avoid this area around the eye. Because I did that first deer with the darker area around it. And like I said, it looked like something out of Halloween. So you can see I'm picking up very little paint. It doesn't have to look even at this point. And I'm just kind of toning him. I'm giving him some color. I'm going to go light on his chest. I need to pick it up and turn. A little bit under his mouth. And it's, a, it's not even. I left it lighter down here. I left it light around the eye area and the head. And remember, this is not the end of the story. This is all about layering. So the, the worst thing you can do with watercolors is to play with it over and over and over. So we're going to leave it right now. Let it dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to go to the antlers and put the first layer on that. Now that is going to be in um, Van Dyke Brown. And I'm going to take a little bit of the, that's a dark brown on our chart here. It's a dark brown. You could also um, make your own if you don't have it. You can mix like the raw ombre with a little tiny bit of black. So I'm going to pull some out onto the palette. And I'm going to bring it into the next, um, where the burnt sienna is, the next um, little pocket here. Because that burnt sienna has that little bit of orangey in it. And I'm going to just tone it a little bit. So, once it's on my palette, take my brush and kind of dampen my antler. And now I don't have to do them all. I could work in sections. It's very easy to do. Then I'm going to pick up paint. And you'll see. See how the paint follows where I dampened. This is how we're going to do the letters too. And you can see it's not that hard to keep it in the lines. It doesn't have to be even. We want a thin, sheer coverage for the first coat, especially. Because it's easier to go darker than to go lighter. So we're going to wet our brush. Dampen the next little section. You don't want this like a pool, but you want it pretty good and damp. If it's too wet, it'll get out of control a bit, as you can imagine. And go back, pick up some more. And as you can see, it's a very loose mixing back and forth. That's what gives it its character. Now we're going to fill this in. See how I'm kind of just encouraging it. To go where I want to go. It's really very um, relaxing when you get into it. Let's see, I might want to bring some of that darker color back over. And see how it's following? Flip it over again. Now it's not even, but don't worry about it. Pick up a little bit of water and do the last leg of your antler. And now see, I barely had to even put paint on. Pick up some color. Let it fall in. I think it's kind of cool how it's like just falls into place. Okay. 
Now I'm going to let that dry a minute and I will be back in a second. Okay, he's all, he's, he's dry enough anyway to move on. And um, I think the next thing I'm going to do is, is in, do a, some of the shading on him. And I'm going to switch from the bigger brush to the littler, which is like a medium-sized brush. And I think I'm going to start shading around his ear and the back of the neck and start showing some of the, the folds in there. And in order to do that, I'm going to take a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown. I need water. It dries fast on your palette, but then the joy of watercolor is that it always reconstitutes. So you don't have to worry. You can, if the phone rings or whatever, I'm just grabbing a paper towel. And I'm going to start with the center of his ear, I think. Just add a little fold in there. Drag some color. Go into the front of his ear, behind his ear. And kind of establish these folds from his neck so it doesn't look like he's, you know, only a big blob. I picked up some of the, um, I'm going to be going back and forth between the browns. The Van Dyke brown is the dark brown. The burnt sienna is reddish and the raw umber is the regular brown or the base or whatever. And I'm just going to be mixing arbitrarily, I guess, and start to get my sense of how I want him to be shaded. Like, see how these putting these little lines in gives him a lot of shape on the top already. So we're kind of like just testing the water, no pun intended. But we want the shade on the underside more than on the top. So in order to do that, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to pick up a little more of the darker. It's going to be a lot of going back and forth. Like I said, a lot of layers. You're almost going to kind of draw in your lines with the tip of your brush and then you come back and and blend them which is actually what float shading is in acrylic painting you're using that same wicking of the water to give your your pieces their shape And the nice part about the um, watercolors is you can move anything you want. So if you don't like something, you can move it, blend it in. It's really a lot of fun. Okay, I'm going to leave that dry. It's getting wet in there. I don't want anything too wet. You'll see the paper starting to wrinkle a little, which is fine. Um, It'll straighten out soon when it's dry. I'm gonna, I loaded up some of the um, burnt sienna and raw umber, made a little mix, and I'm gonna kinda go around the eye just a little to establish that white part. And there was no real line. I didn't put a line on the pattern because I don't want you to um, transfer it. And then just blend this in. Are you seeing like how easy this is? You could also take a little and do under. Now see, I'm barely touching. I'm kind of drawing. And what I'll do is take some water on the brush 
and kind of blend it out. This is a puddle here, so I'm pulling that puddle up. And you can pull that right off if you have too much. I'm going to shade it a little under underneath his mouth. And I'm going to kind of give that face, that cheek shape in there. This is why I wanted to do this on a video because it's easier than explaining it. This is the line from his neck. That looks a little orange, so what I'm going to do is go back and pick up some of the Van Dyke Brown and blend it down. And I'm just erasing lines with water and moving them with water. And it's really fun. It's really kind of nice. Now see, that looks too connected there to me. You don't want a line like that, so you want to break it up a little bit. Just kind of erase it with water. And we're going to go around this ear. The same mixes. I'm just pulling in variations of those three colors. If I want it a little darker, I'll add more of the Van Dyke Brown. If I want to add a little warm red to it, then I add a little bit of the um, Burnt Sienna. If I want a neutralized color, I add the Raw Umber. I want the inside of his ear a little darker, so I'm going to grab the Van Dyke Brown. Now see, I just barely touched it, and it's a dark, it was quite dark, so I'm just going to take that and kind of draw it in like that. And I like that color, so I'm going to put a little of that under the mouth. Give him a knife. And blend it. You see how nice he's looking? I'm going to warm up this on the bottom by using the burnt sienna and the raw umber mix and start by touching on the tip. You can even put a, like a line in like this if, that, if you're more comfortable with that. You don't have to wet everything. You could line it and then rinse your brush and then use the water to fade the line and to soften it. See how nice it is? It's exactly what you're doing when you're float shading. I'm going to take the bigger brush because I want to tone this a little in here. It looks stark. And just add some washy little colors. Now, um, you see me dipping into this little water. I don't know if I mentioned um, I have a big jar for when I really want to rinse my brush, when I go like from green to red or something like that, or when I want to put yellow on. Um, I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And I'm going to start putting in the eye with the little brush. I'm going to wet some black, but I'm going to keep it thick. It's not washy like that. I'm leaving it just a little bit thicker. And I know you probably can't see my, um, my line there, but I have the eye. Yeah, this brush is not a great brush. This set is not my favorite. And I'm just going to tap in his eye. 
leaving the center white. Now, if you go over the center and lose this highlight, it's not a tragedy. What I would suggest you do is either at the end, you could take acrylic paint and put a dot in. Nobody will notice. Or you can get this Copic Opaque White, which is, it's, I got it on Amazon. It was expensive, though, but it goes a long, long way. It's supposed to be used with watercolors or that. And it's probably just like white acrylic paint. So I'll use that, but I mean, you could use your deco arts. And I cannot see a problem. I would do that last. Sorry, I put that down and lost everything. Okay, so his eye is in there. We're going to let that dry because it's quite wet. And then for his nose, what I'm going to do is take my smaller brush and the tip just tip it with black and then just start there's that's quite thick I put a dot in so I'm going to rinse it out and blot it a little and then just drag that black out I don't want a, a big blob of black You want a crisper line by his, um, by the outer edge of his nose, and have it fade back a little bit. Now, see, it looks gray, with, which is fine because we're going to do layers, so it'll be good. And we'll have the softer. Now see if it goes too far, you could just take water and push it. You want to encourage the paint where to go. So, trying to get, not get my head in the shot here. So he's starting to look like a deer. He's got the softer line in the back, and I will take a break and let this set up a minute.